1955, 75% of Catholics attended Mass on a weekly basis. By 1975, that number was down to 54%. During the same period, enrollment in seminaries declined, hundreds of priests and religious left ministry, and the church that once stood as a pillar of society quickly began to fade into irrelevancy. What happened? What could have caused such a major shift in church life in just a few decades? For some, the answer is obvious. Vatican II. If things were great before the Council and awful after the Council, clearly the Council was a major mistake and we need to return to what made the Church successful back in 1955. Makes perfect sense, right? Yeah, as long as you ignore the fact that Protestant Church attendance also declined in that time period. And you know those Protestants, they were always intent on the traditions and authority of the Church, and so when Sancta Sanctum Concilium decided to allow the Mass in the vernacular, they were like, forget it, I'm not attending my Presbyterian service anymore. Women were the same way, it's true. When Vatican II promulgated Nostra Aetate and suggested a change in the relationship with people of other faiths, women around the world got together and said, enough is enough with this patriarchy. We are going to demand equal pay, declare a sexual revolution, and demand abortion rights. All because of Vatican II. I mean, really. If Woodstock, the hippie movement, and the rise of psychedelic drug use isn't a direct response to Gaudium et Spes, I don't know it is. There was the Vietnam War, gay liberation, and the civil rights movement, all leading to protests in the streets, the erosion of traditional values, and enormous civil unrest. Is it just a coincidence that the height of all these movements took place in the late 1960s, right after Vatican II convened? Yeah, actually, it's a pretty common logical fallacy. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. After this, therefore, because of this. It's the idea that when two things happen in succession, the first event must have caused the second, a notion that is clearly illogical. It's like saying that the rooster always crows just before the sun rises, therefore the rooster caused the sun to rise. I mean, he may think he does, I don't know, but it doesn't make it true. Look, I love our church, and we have certainly been influential on a global scale throughout our history. But do we really think, honestly, that a few bishops getting together in Rome caused everything that we see today. Lower church attendance across all Christian denominations, the rise of atheism, overall social unrest. I think we might be giving a little too much credit to the church on this one. The idea that Vatican II is the singular cause of the church's troubles in the 1960s, 70s, and today ignores the fact that the entire world went through a complete revolution during that same time. Surely, revolutions of sexuality, gender, orientation, race, societal norms, war and communications, all happening at the same time, is going to have an effect on the average worshiping Catholic and might just influence church attendance and seminary enrollment. It entirely forgets the fact that much of the world had just been through two catastrophic world wars, most recently a war that saw the deaths of 80 million people, 3% of the world's population, and that those who had been born into that world were just coming of age in the 1960s. It entirely forgets that societal change doesn't happen overnight. Each of the revolutions that took place during this time can trace their roots back decades. Even the four reform movements that shaped Vatican II, biblical, liturgical, ecumenical, and patristic, they all started 20, 40, even 60 years prior. Vatican II didn't artificially shift things overnight or just make stuff up on the spot. It responded to where the church was already moving. Now, has everything that was taught at Vatican II and implemented since a complete success? Of course not. But let's make sure that we always remember a few important things. First, there is a difference between what Vatican II taught and what individuals might have done with its teachings since. I dare you to actually read Sacrosanctum Sanctum Concilium, De Verbum, Lumen Gentium, and Gaudium et Spes, the four constitutions of the Council, and tell me they're not grounded in tradition, built upon scripture, and the patristic fathers. For a second, forget what people did with these documents and accept that they are incredible works of faith. Vatican II is not to blame. But even bigger than that, when you look at the changes that were made after the Council in light of the complete and utter upheaval of the world at that time, I would argue that it is far more logical to say that the Council is actually the reason that we're not worse off today. Honestly, I am 100% serious about this. Look at the values at work in these liberation movements. Look at where the world was in terms of communications, globalization, cultural identity and collaboration, and then look at how the church defines itself at Vatican II. Look at the goals of reforming the liturgy. 
Look how it says we are to relate to the outside world, how we're to engage violence and oppression and poverty and all the ills of the world. Vatican II anticipated all of that. It was ahead of the curve, a prophetic voice out in front, welcoming people in and offering complex, meaningful answers to the pain of the world. I look at the Council and I marvel at what a gift to the world it is, the true manifestation of the Spirit in our world. It's no wonder, then, that globally speaking, the population of the Catholic Church has nearly doubled since the Council. Is this the direct result of Vatican II? Of course not. Post hoc ergo propter hoc, am I right? The world is complicated and so there's no way we could pinpoint a result to any one factor. All I'm saying is that it's clearly not the cause of the Church's ills today and there's evidence that it may have even staved off a complete collapse. The way I see it, the Church is declining in some areas, not because of the documents of some council, but because the Church has ceased being relevant. Its poor handling of the sex abuse crisis, its insistence on a single platform political life, its failure to connect with the ever-changing worries and anxieties of each generation. These are the reasons that the Church is in decline in some areas. How many people who consider themselves formerly Catholic would say that they experienced good preaching at Mass, that they encountered a priest that spoke to the problems of their life? My guess is very few. How many people who found the Mass boring and meaningless have ever experienced it celebrated in all of its beauty and splendor, with music from talented artists, a congregation that participates fully and wants to be there? Probably very few. How many people growing up Catholic attended churches where the word church meant more than just going to Mass, it was being a part of a family committed to charity and justice that made an impact on its local community worth being proud of? Almost none, I'm sure. I firmly believe that the issues our church faces are not a matter of a council that most Catholics know nothing about. It's about relevancy in their lives. I hear it all the time that attendance at Latin Mass is high and that they're growing, and that's great. For a segment of the population, for whatever reason, the faith bears relevancy and lives on. Really, that's great. I'm happy that the Church allows this valid option for people who want that. But that doesn't mean that reinstituting the 1962 Latin Missal en masse or undoing Vatican II and going back to the 1955 Church is going to magically fix the Church. The reality is that the world has changed drastically since 1955, probably more than at any time in human history, and all this would do is create a small, exclusive church of intense believers, much like Latin Mass communities today. Vatican II is not the problem, and the Latin Mass is not the answer. It's clear from our history that both Masses have produced and nurtured saints. It's clear that both rites are concerned with the tradition of the Church, albeit in different ways, and are meaningful to a lot of people. And it is most certainly clear when we see the enormous expansion of the Church in the past 60 years in places like Asia and Africa that Vatican II is bearing fruit in our world. We are all upset at the decline of the Church in some areas, but it doesn't do any good to point blame where it isn't deserved or to use logical fallacies. Our Church does have some serious problems, poor preaching, an unengaged laity, a disrespected conference of bishops. I suggest we put our energy here and give up this ridiculous blame game.